Stacey Abrams was nominated for Outstanding Character Voiceover Performance in an election special that was on Blackish. So, Man, f her. Well, she ain't been on Keep It. She ain't part of my family. <laughs> yeah. She ain't yeah, part of my family. She keep going, she keep she going on Pod Save America. Okay. What is Stacey going to talk to us about? Actually, she'd be loving TV. Get her I on know. here. I know. That's Buffy, disrespectful. Okay. We could talk about her book, Justice Never Sleeps. I, <laughs> I don't care if you had a hand in changing the okay. election outcome, Stacey. Come to this damn podcast. Welcome to Keep It, Cricket Media show about pop culture and politics and what happens when they smack into each other at an alarming speed. I'm your host, Ira Madison III, the television writer and Fallout Boy fan. I'm Louis Fertel. I'm a TV writer and Jane Fonda historian. And I'm Aida Osman. I'm a TV writer and alleged comedian. Let's get into it. As we emerge from the burning wreckage that is the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, the Television Academy has only solidified its legitimacy as the silver screen's most revered institution. And this very morning, they released their nominations for the 2021 Emmys. Let's take a look at the nominees. Which have bring now out, rolled in, out. I believe. What are we excited about? This is still fresh. This is still hot. I first of all, I would have to. I want to give like a moment to talk about the stream itself, okay? Because oh, please. So excited! I love, I love, I love the formality of waking up, listening at eight thirty. We had who did we have? Lewis. I don't want to mispronounce their names. Oh, Ron and Jasmine Safest Jones. And I only say I don't want to mispronounce their names because you know I will deliberately to make fun of them for ma- for missing and mispronouncing most people's names. We had an Ada Bryant. We had <laughs> we had. Do you know who I'm talking about when I say that? Yeah. We had we had at first it's just an awkward energy Bly between the father Porter. and daughter. We had- <laughs> and Taylor Joy. It went on and on. Jason Sudeikis. Yeah. I'm just like if you are if you are presenting. Because we, we go through this every year for the Oscars, the Emmys, the clubs, et cetera. If you're presenting, maybe find someone who knows who the fuck these people are. This is why, like, when they announced the Oscars, like, Issa and John were up at 5.30 because they had been practicing. And this is what we get when we get an 8.30 stream. Most of the, most of the names will not be known, according to... According to the Cephas Joneses. Well, I remember specifically when Tiffany Haddish read the Oscar nominations and she struggled through a bunch of these, the names of people who weren't celebrities. You know, just it's it's like super hard. Mm-hmm. What can you do? Like you inevitably will forget certain pronunciations. But I mean, Jason Sudeskis. Jason Sudeskis. I mean, like, let's get the <laughs> let's get like the the people who will likely win star yes. Emmys down. Well, Tiffany Haddish recently struggled through an episode of Legendary as well. So. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I'm upset from um, Michaela Call, upset for my white king, Jason Sudeikis. I know it mm. changes often who that is. What are you upset about? Um, but his name being pronounced wrong. Oh, oh. I see. <laughs> yes. Oh, he'll live. Not upset Mr. for them Lasso in general. Will. I'm very happy for them. Uh, in general, I'm very happy for Michaela Cole. Happy for Jason Sudeikis, who was on the cover of GQ today. So mm. I love that man. I love Ted Lasso. Mm. I don't know if we ever talked about Ted Lasso on this show, but that show. I don't show, know that we have. That show was beautiful. And I avoided it because of the reviews. It was the kind of show that like outlets like BuzzFeed and things kept being like, this is the show you need to be watching in 2020. Ted Lasso feels like a warm hug. And I was like, if these white people don't shut the fuck up about Ted Lasso. <laughs> and then I watched it. Oh, and how did it go? And it's amazing. Yeah, I watched it in like yeah. a weekend. But I watched it like after New Year's Day when I was like hungover. It's amazing. I feel I feel like I had a resistance to it as well because he's one of the last in the class of the SNL people to get a television show. And I'm like, girl, you behind. Like, <laughs> let's just put it put it to bed and I'll watch it later. I had seen 30 Rock. Come on, girl. But then I watched it and it was hilarious and it was fun. And Jason Sudeikis holds up and is amazing and still funny. I only saw the pilot so far. And the reason is I will get end up seeing the rest of the uh, series. I often resist the shows where I'm told it's like a big warm hug. Just because, mm-hmm. stop telling me I need to be comforted. Stop telling me yeah. I, I need to be like swaddled by television and I need to like fall in love with the characters and it needs to end like Parks and Recreation where the big twist mm-hmm. is everyone's nice. You know, yeah. just like. <laughs> <laughs> and engaged just, now. Right, right. It's just so, because uh, I'm very Veep oriented or very uh, uh, mm-hmm. Girls 5 ever. I just want the hard jokes and yes. I, don't need, I don't want your comfort and don't touch me, I'm German. Yes, um, yeah. I just issues. want the hard R. <laughs> To be honest. Oh, yeah. I In, yeah. <laughs> I 
No. I I'm, dear. Listen, I will say about Ted Lasso, and then we can move on. You watch that, and the because he can sort of be cloying in the first episode. It's very mm-hmm. like, okay, everyone's happy. It's giving you that sort of vibe. The show realizes that that's who he is and, you know, sort of like makes fun of it and, you know, satirizes it later on in the series. So um, it becomes a lot smarter um, beyond the pilot. Also, the supporting cast is fucking fantastic. Just like hilarious actors, but they're Brits, mm-hmm. you know, and we, we, we're simply better comedians. Yeah. Again, again, I don't know why almost every British person is funny just casually. I bring this up all the time. Why is Robert Pattinson funny? Why is Daniel Radcliffe funny? It upsets me. It's not their job, and yet they are in interviews almost every time. I think the big category we got to care about here is lead actress in a limited series movie or anthology because you That's got Michaela fair. Cole, That's Cynthia fair. Erivo, and Genius, which are we going to watch that one, guys? Okay. We're just going to trust. We're just going to trust <laughs> blindly. Right. Carry on. Cynthia Riva being like, here I am, another biopic. God damn it. All right. Um, Elizabeth Olsen and WandaVision, Anya Taylor Come Joy on, and Queen's Gambit, and Kate Winslet and Mayor of Easttown. Really, I mean, this is like the new Zodiac. Whoever you pick here really says everything to me ooh, about you. Ooh, a Tiger Beat quiz. Ooh, okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. You know, listen, I'm rooting for Michaela Call, and uh-huh. it's clear that she's going to win, um, uh-huh. probably. But mm, see, it's not. To. Oh, uh, well, Anya Taylor-Joy has quite the chance. Elizabeth fucking Olsen for WandaVision? That is wild to me. And you know what? I love it. I love it. And you hosts will deal. I'm so excited about this just because it's like, you know, for whatever we thought about how like WandaVision ended, and I thought it ended, you know, like a little bit too much, like a rock'em sock'em robot um, <laughs> match. But I like that. I hope that this... Um, is an indication that uh, Marvel should be trying m- weirder things, you know, mm-hmm. right. uh, and letting actors just do their fucking thing. Because, like, you know, Loki, for example, is fucking great, and Tom Hiddleston's amazing in it, and he'll probably be nominated next year, you know? Uh, right. We want more of that. Uh, mm-hmm. I will say, though, Elizabeth Olsen, and I think she's the name I'm talking about here, knocked out Nicole Kidman for The Undoing. And I've got to tell you, as someone who Nicole just believes Kidman Nicole, out Kidman, Nicole Kidman for okay. The Undoing. I Do you think it's white woman for white woman? You think it's, it's okay. mousy white woman for other mousy one? Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> the TV Academy watched The Undoing, and that is why they did not nominate Nicole Kidman. Uh, by the way, I'm happy about Hugh Grant's nomination. I thought he was really good. Also, I, I thought Nicole was good, and the series is just a flop. I just don't like this, yeah. the show. So, do you know how many times I'll be literally washing dishes and just remember her crossing the street with that coat just flapping in the wind behind her? She walked. With Roman's Revenge she playing walked. in the background. <laughs> <laughs> rah, rah, I'm going to find my husband. Roman Holiday. Roman <laughs> Holiday. That's the one. <laughs> I am rooting for Kate Winslet ultimately, though, because the amount of absent sad sandwich eating she does in this show i've never seen the likes of it before i mean how many she she got enough awards how many quiznos calories did she like endure to bring this performance to us the whole show is a punch card (laughs) yeah (laughs) oh that'd be cute in the dvd you can like clip them out yeah Yeah. so let's also talk about lead actor in a limited series um paul bettany was also nominated uh iconic Mm. he was great in that show um Mm -hmm. Hugh Grant was nominated. I don't know if he did. Well, maybe it was just sparse and Hamilton kind of dominated. But I will say that Hugh Grant, aside from Noma Dumaswini, um, was the only person who was like dialed into the undoing for me. He seemed like he knew he was in a early 2000s Astrid Judd film <laughs> uh, and was playing it accordingly. <laughs> Ewan McGregor is nominated for Halston, which if you've seen a Ryan Murphy thing, <laughs> okay. uh, it's probably just like that which is why i haven't watched it it is like it's like the arithmetic mean of ryan murphy productions just like exactly 50 percent on metacritic sort of like uh splashy historic lots Mm -hmm. of costumes to look at quite literally beautiful gowns yes it should have been called beautiful gowns the series right um his performance i believe straight people can play gay well i found this to be slightly a more one note portrayal of a legend than I expected from Ewan McGregor, who, by the way, I thought was awesome, and I love you, Philip Morris. So I've seen him play gay well before. Um, mm. Girl, anyway, Ewan McGregor has sucked some dick. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> we've seen him Truly. on camera playing gay for too long and doing it too well. 
That's true. Where you learn that? Where you learn all that, girl? Who right? You Come on. Who Even Obi Wan Kenobi, mm-hmm. okay, had a limp wrist. <laughs> I have to suck dick. It's method. <laughs> <laughs> if you have the stuff for train spotting, maybe you can just do, do anything, including gay things. I think all of them actors in the '90s, you know, was just doing it. You know? Yeah. There were like no rules. Yeah. Okay. We haven't even gotten to the cast of My Private Idaho, okay? <laughs> <laughs> right, you throw Gus Van Sant in the mix, woof. Now now there's even less rules. This is all to say, um, I'm having more fun um, guessing if Ewan McGregor has slept with a man um, than I am uh, at the prospect of talking about Hamilton being nominated again. Yeah, let's zoom past <laughs> that. Let's zoom past that to laugh very quickly at this category called Outstanding Unstructured Reality Program, which is quiet shade. <laughs> which is quiet shade. But come on, Selling Sunset. Selling Sunset. And those are the only two that I've actually watched. If you guys have got around to RuPaul's Drag Race Untucked, have you seen? Yeah, it's, you know, it's something this season. But this isn't the season that's nominated. Here's the problem with this. Whatever RuPaul's Drag Race is nominated for an Emmy, I don't know what the fuck has been nominated because the show is never not on. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, it, it, it's always between seasons or you get half seasons one way or the mm-hmm. other or All Stars comes into play. Mm-hmm. Like, has All Stars ever been nominated or is it always just the main thing? Because All Stars is routinely better than the um, the normal season. Can Espana get nominated? Because that's much <laughs> better than any of the other ones at the moment. Right. Um, Below Deck? All right. A show that it's been on for either three or 15 years. <laughs> yeah, it's probably the latter. Uh, yeah. And there's many spinoffs. Uh, and Indian Matchmaking. Whew. Remember that damn show? That's, ooh, I yeah. love that show. <laughs> Remember when the colorism jumped out? <laughs> As she tends to do. I just think unstructured could be free form, could be um, just improv, could be a different word that isn't just wild and untamed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't get unstructured reality <laughs> as as the name for. Um, it's so disrespectful. What this is, <laughs> y'all just did it. <laughs> also, I actually have to jump back to another weird category, which is outstanding supporting actress in a limited or anthology series. This is pretty crazy. So you got. Moses Ingram, who played Jolene in The Queen's Gambit. And then you have Renee Elise Goldsberry. But then you have Philip Basu in Hamilton, which is like drawing the Joker in a deck of what? cards. Like we just are allowing <laughs> Hamilton to do whatever the fuck it wants. Then there's Julianne Nicholson in Mayor of Easttown. Gene Smart in Mayor of Easttown. And then Catherine Hahn in WandaVision, who's like the internet's pick. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's like another one uh, where, Lewis. depending on who you pick, I know everything about you. Hamilton... What is Hamilton? Is it a taping <laughs> of a play? Is it a movie? Is it a... I don't know. It's an unstructured competition program. Is what uh, Hamilton limited series is. for a movie. <laughs> it's just wild to me. It's just wild to have a category where it's yeah. like Hamilton, WandaVision, Queen's Gambit. We got, we got to switch up these categories. Bitch, go to the Tonys and leave us alone, <laughs> Lynn Manuel. <laughs> when you have 3,000 categories, it can't be this messy in the supported categories. It's, it's just, it's like, it's like at the Grammys when there's like alternative music, and then that includes both Bjork and like the White Stripes. Mm. Mm-hmm. I mean, and meanwhile, people are still being nominated for The Handmaid's Tale, which is apparently still on TV. When people can sit through that show, what is wrong with you? Stop it. <laughs> there are people we, who love we that We voted show. out Trump. We voted out Trump. Stop watching. Stop watching the show. There are people show. who are fully like, ooh, I can't wait to get home and watch me some Handmaid's Tale. Really? You want to go home and watch <laughs> uh, torture porn? It's, ba- uh, it's, un- it's unbearable. I'm so shocked by like, it. I'd rather watch Saw. <laughs> or hostile what the home, series. What if you went home and watched Saw every day? That's what that show is like. <laughs> That's how I find repose, <laughs> Lewis. <laughs> Peace. You know what I'm kind of mad about? And of course, we all knew the Variety Talk series was going to go to um, Lewis's boss, Jimmy Kimmel. We got mm-hmm. a Conan. We got a John Oliver, Stephen Colbert, mm-hmm. and Trevor Noah. But I wanted Jesus and Marrow to get a little a moment. Guys, a they moment. are never not funny. I just watched a, <laughs> another clip of them, and it's like, they uh, talk about struck by lightning. I mean, just some of the, the fastest the speed, people, the parlay, the yeah. Yeah. and and the never contrived. It's like never picking like a a cliche joke or whatever. It never feels mm-hmm. like hammy or pandering to an audience. Like they're just so good at what they do. Yeah. Um. On the other snubs, snubbed. um. Allegedly, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier was snubbed, but um. I didn't even. I didn't finish that. So um. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> shout out to them. 
Pedro Pascal is the lead in The Mandalorian, technically, but co-stars Giancarlo Esposito, Timothy Oliphant, and Carl Weathers were nominated, and the show was also nominated for Best Drama. I don't know anyone who watches The Mandalorian. I know everyone um. who knows the memes and talks about Baby Yoda, <laughs> and I at one That's point learned Baby Yoda's real name, but I have not pressed play, but no. I support its existence. My friends have a Grogu doll, and when we go to Palm Springs, it comes with them, and they put on like they'll put like a Hawaiian lay on it or lipstick or something. That to me is as much Mandalorian as I will be watching. I just mm. look. I just know too many too many hoteps that think the Mandalorian is a metaphor for life. So I had to, I had to not mm. watch it. <laughs> Small Axe was also snubbed, which also I don't think any of you watched. No. Did I didn't, unfortunately, but I heard it was amazing. And I hate to be the person who says, I heard it was amazing. Oh, wait, no, I lie. I lie. I lie. I lie. I did watch the beginning of it. I was just, I was enamored. I watched I really one was. of them. I, just didn't get to I watched one it. of them. I do need to finish it. I do. I love Steve McQueen. And it's Likewise. right up your alley. Black people, yeah. British. Yeah. And, and, and of funny. I, I simply Little love oppressed. axes that are small. So, <laughs> really must check it out. Problem for small axes, it came right. It came out right at the same time as Judas and the Black Messiah, and I was just over Black Strife, so it was mm-hmm. difficult for me to to, to mm-hmm. split my emotions. Also, it's on Amazon, and their interface is always hard to figure out. Going to watch a show, although I'm very happy that The Boys no, what? is nominated. <laughs> um, what? Really? It, it, it's difficult for you to navigate Amazon. It is. What, because you'd rather be shopping or because... What's Usually, the deal? yes, yes. Yeah, okay. that has you know to be me, that. It's not logistics. I would be shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Good. You're <laughs> Def Jam set. You're Def Jam set ready. And you know what? Uh, listen, our national, um, our national crisis of one day at a time, never being nominated, and <laughs> constantly being on the verge of cancellation is over. It didn't get mm. nominated. The show is off the air now. Maybe it's time oh to let God. it go to rest. Maybe it's time to let it rest. Because you know what? If, if as many people were watching One Day at a Time as you're constantly tweeting about how nobody's watching One Day at a Time, maybe it'd still be on the air. Oh, my God. I have a story about One Day, t- one day at a Time, strangely. So I went to my friend's house. I have friends who play game nights that are specifically game show oriented. They're all game show producers, and we play game shows. Anyway, I go there, and my friends keep mentioning that my friend John, who's this big game show producer, he's one of the judges on the show Pyramid, where like uh, he judges whether or not celebrities are uh, play the game correctly. People keep saying, oh, have you met John's boyfriend yet? Have you met John's boyfriend yet? I'm like, no, nor do I care to meet anybody's boyfriend. Stop harassing me. And then, <laughs> finally, they say his name. They're like, and John and Glenn Scarpelli will be on a team together. My friend is dating Anne Romano's adopted son from the original One Day at a Time, Glenn Scarpelli, who is so nice. And they knew that I had seen every episode of One Day at a Time, and I still could not put it together. So anyway, I said this to my friend, and she said, Louis Fertel into the Schneiderverse. That's a pun for all of you. <laughs> One Day at a Time fans. Love that. Love that. Before we go, though, I, there's two things I want to get mad about. Many keep it's within our Emmy nomination segment. We have actually one keep it, one celebration. How dare I? We have uh, Felicia Rashad getting a Emmy for guest actress in This Is Us. Was well, this an Emmy nom? She an Emmy nom, an yet. Emmy nom. She didn't Girl. win yet. And she but, won't be winning. And she won't be winning. Well, I don't know. She's bringing Cosby as her date. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, His cool. last Emmy is, y'all, the final one. Unfortunately, he won't oh, be able to see goodness. it because he's blind. It's so weird to want to throw Claire Huxtable <laughs> side eye at Claire Huxtable. It's a very shocking feeling. Yeah, it's painful. It's very, very painful, especially because the week prior to her coming out as a supporter again like this, I had just told people in my writer's room that if I had to pick anyone dead or alive to have dinner with, I chose Mrs. Huxtable. Mm. <laughs> oh. Claire Huxtable, Felicia Rashad, and then also Jack A. I just really uh. want a black sitcom mother, a sit mom. Mm. I, you know what? Wait till the daytime Emmys roll around next year That's and right. Jack A can get nominated mm. for her excellent work on Days of Our <laughs> Lives. Okay, she, <laughs> she does. Is, she was doing dramatic turns. She was she was secretly plotting to um, destroy the town square um, and turn it into um, a big building called Price Town, which is <laughs> her name on the show. <laughs> Jack Hay, of course, already uh, an Emmy winner, uh, but she was the only yeah. Yeah. best supporting actress in a comedy winner for years and years and years. She won in I think eighty seven for two two seven. Wait, the only black one, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, because I, I think there were other winners. Oh, <laughs> yes, they, they, they kept the category. They kept the category. 
it'd be wild if Jack That's ate it. one and then they were like, no more winners. He's like, shut it down. For 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> But the thing that I said that we should celebrate is Crooked Family Member, and of course she's done many other things, Stacey Abrams, and this is a long one, was nominated for Outstanding Character Voiceover Performance in an election special that was on Blackish. So Yeah, fuck her. She ain't been on Keep It. She ain't part of my family. (laughs) She ain't part of my family. She keep going going on Pod Save America, okay? What is Stacey going to talk to us about? Actually, she'd be loving TV. Get her I on know. here. I know. That's Buffy, disrespectful. Okay. We could talk about her book, Justice Never Sleeps. I, <laughs> I don't care if you had a hand in changing the okay. election outcome, Stacey. Come to this damn podcast. I have pressing questions about whether Justice Never Sleeps is a sequel to Wall Street 2, Money Never Sleeps. Also, I wonder if she's one of those people who loves Buffy so much that it's... Um, uh, sublimated into a Sarah Michelle Geller obsession, which happens with certain gay men. And I'm like, but that's really all she gave us. Why are we still obsessed with her? Okay, listen, bitch. <laughs> Speaking I of Sarah Michelle Geller, I know you did Geller. not. I know the fuck you did not sit here and say that that is the only thing Sarah Michelle Geller ever gave us. Because before that, it she is. was Kendall Hart on All My Children, and oh, then sorry. after um, that, should I she leave gave the room? Us Helen Shivers, I know <laughs> what you did last well. summer. Daphne, Scooby Doo, and Scooby Doo Two Monsters Unleashed. She <laughs> Guys, gave Ira's us twitching. Ringer. Ira's eye is twitching right now. <laughs> so <laughs> losing his shit. I'm sorry. You shouldn't have gotten to Scooby Doo that fast. You shouldn't have gotten to Scooby Doo that fast. So <laughs> this is the most offensive thing you've ever said on this. Southland she is great Tales. In, I know what you did last summer. She is great in that. Don't say South- Southland Tales to me. Come on. <laughs> The ringer, you should be ashamed. The ringer. <laughs> ringer was a great show. Okay, for you. Okay, listen, it was better than Gossip Girl. All right, that I can. Who are you with. fighting? Who are you fighting right now? Better than the original Gossip Girl, to be honest. Okay, <laughs> baby, now you're just crazy. You've been you've been driven crazy. She was also, guys. She also voiced her various characters that she played before on uh, Robot Chicken. I and don't care what she did. Her name her is episode too long. of Sex in the City. <laughs> I don't even remember that episode. Speaking of Sex in the City, it's just this category of women from the '90s that made us call them seven different names, like Sarah Michelle Gellar and yeah. Sarah Jessica Parker. Just shorten it. Be Zendaya. Figure oh it God, out. I'm sorry, Lewis has me like so spun out here. I've left <laughs> out the thing that may be even slightly more iconic than Buffy. Cruel Intentions. All right, well, mm. I think Cruel Intentions is a two-star movie. I think it's like the it's like bad acting, but fun in that way. And Screen then, two. Okay, her one scene. Simply yes, I remember irresistible. That. Now you're just bringing up words. You're bringing up Robert Palmer hits. Um, <laughs> I, uh, did you just call Cruel Intentions a two-star movie? Yes, Cruel Intentions is three and a half star. Or sorry, y'all. Lewis Dangerous will be Liaisons dead. is Lewis three and a half stars. Next week, so it'll just be me and Aida. <laughs> Lewis is gonna be murdered. Plotting. We're back. Season Keep three. it. <laughs> if you if you ask Swoozy Kurtz, who's in both of them, Dangerous Liaisons and Cruel Intentions, which is the better? Swoozy is going to say Dangerous Liaisons and not Blink, and then probably star in three multicams. Ira, Ira, I'll I'll give you one. I'll give you one. I know what you did last summer. That's the one. She is good in that. And I also is Bridget Wilson Sampras. I know what I'm doing this summer. What you doing? Putting on a rain slicker, grabbing a hook, (laughs) and hunting Lewis through an alley. Okay, I'll let Christian Bale. (laughs) 